Hi, I'm Professor Kevin Sykes, designer of the Chester Step Test, a submaximal test for the assessment of aerobic capacity. The test really evolved out of an earlier test that I designed called Phytec. That was a home-based step test designed to measure aerobic capacity, but in a very simple way. It was what we call a single stage, so it meant stepping onto and off a household chair at a given rate set by the cassette music beat, and then after five minutes recording heart rate during recovery period. It was two step heights, one a 40 centimetres normal step height for uh, men and a slightly lower step height for, for ladies. This was really well received um, by a wide range of, of, of people, not just general public, but in occupational health it began to be used uh, for assessment of firefighters and police officers and at the, uh, as was ver then very common, the garden festivals for use by the Health Education Authority as it was known in those days. However, uh, when I was working with the fire service, we were looking to devise a much more sophisticated system that could be used by occupational health doctors and nurses in clinic. So in Cheshire, we gathered a group of occupational doctors together um, to look at what their requirements would be to design a test that could be used both in clinic by a doctor nurse and in the workplace. So these are some of the criteria that were suggested and I had to work around. Um, first of all, it had to be easy to standardise, it had to be reliable, it had to be inexpensive and portable so people could be moved around uh, and the testers could go around different stations. It had to be submaximal, the medics were keen for it to be a submaximal exercise. It had to be multi-stage, therefore, so instead of being single-stage, as was Phytec, this was a multi-stage, incremental step test. Um, ten minutes was felt to be about the maximum duration it could be for practicalities in, in clinic and workplace settings. Ideally, it would monitor heart rate so we could keep a good check on heart rate throughout the test. Same height, ideally, for men and women, rather than different heights. Um, it had to be ideally height and gender independent, so tall people versus smaller people. Um, it had to be clinic and workplace friendly, and it had to have a manual system where the docs, the nurses, the firefighters, the instructors could plot the results and calculate aerobic capacity. As such, because it then became widely used within the UK Fire Service, it was colloquially known as the Cheshire Fire Service Step Test and really was well received as an alternative to the multi-stage bleep test, 20 metre bleep test that was commonly used. As things progressed, um, a wider range of occupational physicians saw its use in a variety of situations, the police, um, steel workers, the oil and gas industry, offshore, etc, etc. So the name was coined Chester, as I was from Chester, Chester Step Test. And in addition, there was a software calculator added into the package and the step heights of 30, 25, 20 and 15 centimetres were added. Also an RPE scale rating of perceived exertion. In the early days, we kept it as a single step height, um, as you can see from the, the slide, with a firefighter stepping on a gym bench. And the reason for that was that virtually every fire station had gym benches, all of 12 inches height. Our research also showed that it was largely independent when we tested tall people and we tested short people, and gender independent when we tested males versus females. So we were very confident in the early days with using a 12 inch step. However, as it then progressed to wider use with other groups, it obviously it needed the different step heights to cater for the wide range of people and populations that were intending to use it. The RP scale was extremely useful, it was very popular uh, in the 80s and, and, and 90s, uh, as it still is. Um, the idea was to stop the test at 80% of heart rate maximum, and that equated to an RPE of somewhat hard, between somewhat hard and heavy. And again, the chart will be on the wall and the subject at the end of each two minute stage would respond by saying, yes, I feel about number 11, 12, 13 
uh, and 14 will be the point at which the, the test will be stopped. So what actually is Chester step test and what are the procedures? Well, as I've mentioned, it's a submaximal multi-stage step test to assess aerobic capacity. What's needed in the CST kit would be a manual with instructions, da graphical data sheets so that the data could be plotted and shown as a visual record to the subject, an instructional CD which had got the stepping rhythms and beats, and aerobic capacity calculator, a heart rate monitor and an appropriate step. So the subject steps at a pace set by the audio beat. The step rate increases every two minutes. Five levels we decided, each level being two minutes and it's a continuous test. One doesn't stop in between the levels. So first level 15, second level 20, third level 25, fourth level 30, and the final level 5 on 35 steps per minute. The test duration then, potentially, unless the subject reaches 80% of heart rate max before the end of the test, the potential would be that this would be a 10 minute uh, maximum test. Heart rate and RPE, rating of perceived exertion, are recorded at the end of each two minute level. And the test ends, as I mentioned, at 80% heart rate maximum or an RPE of 14, in other words, moderately hard. The graphical data sheets for visual line of best fit plots could then be produced by the tester, or the data could be entered into the aerobic capacity calculator and the aerobic capacity result and the fitness level would be shown by the software. So typically here would be a graph as to how the results would look. So in this particular instance, this is a 30 year old who managed to step four different levels. So you can see the four different heart rates have been recorded. Pretty much a straight line. A line of best fit is visually drawn between the points up to maximum heart rate and then a perpendicular dropped to predict aerobic capacity. So that would be the visual graphical interpretation the next one would be a computer generated line of best fit, L-O-B-F. So the printout would look pretty much like this. So the graph would be drawn for you. The results would be inputted into the software screens and the normative database, the position in general population, for example, will be shown in this example. Different step heights were then recorded uh, and used to um, accommodate the wide range of ages and abilities. 30 centimetres, 25, 20 and 15. And this meant it could be marketed to a much wider uh, worldwide audience in both occupational, in community and in clinical settings. So, what about the test itself? Well, in summary, it's suitable for a wide range of ages abilities, males and females. It's not really suitable for obese or other medical contraindications, e.g. knee and hip problems, beta block patients, etc. Its validity is, is very good. There's a high correlation to VO2 max, but it is affected by variations in heart rate max and anxiety, nerves. Accuracy, uh, most step tests, submaximal tests, are around about 10 to 15%. A carefully administered chest to step test, uh, I would expect the variability to be around about 10%. In terms of reliability, it's very good as a test retest. So if we did the same test a week after, a month after, then uh, the results would be, be reliable. Advantages? Well, it's simple to administer. It's inexpensive, it's portable, it's easy to calibrate the height of the step and the stepping rhythms are all um, uh, uh, controlled and calibrated. It's sub-maximal, so everyone, whether they're fit or unfit, would stop at 80% of their heart rate max. Wide range uh, of ages and ability, again, big advantage depending on the uh, situation in which the tester may be working. It's a good estimate of aerobic capacity 
it's a one-to-one, -one, so you have uh, control of the subject, you see how they're coping with the exercise. Um, it's good then to prescribe exercise from. Once you've seen the result, you can use the result in exercise prescription. And the RPE um, tries to explain to people how exercise should feel at moderately hard levels. Disadvantages, it's not an exact measure. The variance of estimated heart rate max makes it, again, a variable. And the heart rate, as I've mentioned, is affected by nerves, and particularly by poor stepping rhythm. The one-to-one -one in certain scenarios can be either an advantage or a disadvantage if you're looking to test lots of people. So in summary, the Chester Step Test is really a good um, estimate of aerobic capacity.